Hey, it's the Fort Worth Playboy. And my Playboy's Bunny. Welcome to our podcast where we discuss <laughs> pickup, game, relationships, and sex, sex, sex. And today's topic is girls, new babies, and extended family. Babies. And I was like, when I start, we were talking about, this is probably the softest subject we've ever discussed. <laughs> This falls under relationships. It just definitely makes me want to cuddle something. It's, yeah. Like I, don't, a, I don't have baby fever, but. No, yeah. we're way beyond that. But that's why I we're feel not. that we can talk about this. Yeah, I agree. Um, which is absolutely insane. Um, <laughs> it, it goes by so fast. So. As I what start crying. We noticed. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> what we've noticed is guys getting caught off guard. Yeah. Because nobody tells them. And that's what I like about my book, Basic Training. It tells them, you know, you get a lot of these basic things. Yeah. And and I'll say this, and then we'll go from there. When you're newly married, because I remember a girl, her goals in life are get a serious boyfriend, get engaged, have a wedding, buy a house, get pregnant. Yeah. So there's a wild card in here. You've gotten married. You've bought a house, and she gets pregnant. Or you're you've gotten married. You want to buy a house, exactly. Because, you know, and you're looking in the area. Yeah. And now she's pregnant. Nine out of ten women will want to move back to their parents, or move parents closer to them. Yeah. We hear it over and over. And over, and the really smart girls, I mean, have had this, but a lot of people do not have this discussion, right? Because America is so fragmented, they don't really think about extended families. It's true. But we know, and we know this that one of the hardest things to do, whether the mom, whether you got the money for her to stay at home, or she has to work, which is even worse, is doing a nuclear family or a traditional family without any support nearby. Exactly. Family support is nearly impossible. And I, I do find it sad, disheartening, because so many girls will get pregnant away from their family support, but they justify in the beginning of their pregnancy, the beginning stages that they have a lot of friends, they have friend support, they, friends are gonna help, them. they're not. They're just not. Very seldom do friends step up the way family steps up whenever you are sick, when you wanna have a date night, when you need to go back to work but you don't really wanna use a daycare. There are so many different re ways that family almost across the board will step up that no one else in your circle will. No matter how much these friends love and adore you, no matter how many kids that they have on their own, and no matter whether they run a daycare already, you name it, whatever the rationale is that you are telling yourself or that girls are telling themselves when they're pregnant, it really does not hold water, I would say, 90% of the time. And literally, just kind of like their hormones kind of like flip and they go, I want to get pregnant. I've never wanted kids before. And then they're jumping on the dick like every, yeah. you know, every two days Seriously. to get pregnant. That longing to get closer to their family mm -hmm. or get their family closer to them. is It runs deep. It's you, I mean, they start freaking out. They, yeah. And... And again, there are caveats because there are, I mean, you. this is a common question I ask girls, you know, and some will be very blunt. They'll be like, I moved 2,000 miles away from my parents and I want it to be a four hour plane ride for them to come anywhere near me, my husband or my children. Right. You know, so there's women that know. Yeah. Most women in a perfect world do have a good relationship yeah. with their family. And their family is supportive and capable. Um, but Bunny is absolutely on the spot. No one will take care of your kids or back you up like your family in the right dynamics. Right. You know, some grandmothers, they don't, they don't want to have anything. But you know, and I'm telling you, like eight to nine out of ten, they'll want to move closer. You know, 
you have never – they moved immediately after high school. Had to get away. Yeah. Had to get away. And then they went to college out of state. Then they moved to the other coast. Yeah. Well, now they want to be – their mom and dad are getting older. Yeah. Their sister lives down the street from them. She's got three kids. Yeah. And there's a house for sale. Exactly. You know, I mean. House for sale on mom and dad's block. Yeah, Perfect. exactly. Perfect. Exactly. We could just go look at it when we're there anyway. Exactly. Like next week. Yeah. And that's how you end up moving across the country with a pregnant woman. It sure is. It happens all the time. And I would say more times than not, it happens in the second half of the pregnancy. It's. It's not something that necessarily comes up right away. If it doesn't come up beforehand where it's like, well, now it's now we're at that stage where the next step is to, you know, get pregnant. Let's I really want to be close to my family whenever we have children, when we raise raise children. You'll you know? have six months. Seriously. It's absolutely and you would be surprised how many women you'll like see on an airplane or you're like, What are you doing? Well, I'm moving back closer to my parents. Right. You know, yeah, right. we we'll move everything else is in a truck. Exactly. You know, you're like, okay. I mean, it's so common. It is so common. It's so common. And Bunny's absolutely correct. Like, they don't really think about it that much. But then when it starts, they're like, shit, my mom can only come out here for like a week. And yeah. then she's got to be back because she takes care of my sister's kids. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're like, oh, shit. You know, and, and what in the U.S. we were brought up is thinking of like, you know, you got your parents nearby. You have a job. You have two parents, you have two or three kids in the house. Mm -hmm. Well, it's nearly impossible when you don't have that support from outside and familial support. Yeah. Be it labor or money or material or a combination of all three. You right. know, And what we've seen in people's quality of life when their parents are nearby and involved is black and white better. Yeah. Than people that are juggling child care, and it, it's just completely different. Completely yeah. different. The the wife is always much more relaxed if she has a good relationship with her family. Yes. And they're involved. I mean, you're like, those people are living very well. They may not be rich, but they live a high quality of life. Exactly. You know, that's the kicker. Well, and I always with with stories like this, I always think of once when my oldest two kids were. Let's say three and four years old. I got pneumonia. Not the walking kind that sounds like a little head cold, but I mean, I got fucking pneumonia. And it, I wouldn't wish pneumonia on my worst enemy. It is so incredibly painful. And I lived at the time six hours straight shot, 80 miles per hour highway in between us from. My parents and my and my grandparents they had moved closer to to my mother's family so six hours away my husband couldn't take off work all I had to do was get to my parents with the children and I would be taken care of I I, I had the energy to drive to my parents six hours away now, make no mistake, my parents were both still working. You know, my mom was a stay-at-home mom when I was being raised, but then it was like, well, I guess I'll get a job because I don't want to just sit around and get fat and watch soap operas. So my mother is the one who took off work to take care of myself and my children. I, I don't even know why. I ended up in their bedroom. I don't know where they all slept. <laughs> I slept in their bedroom. For two solid weeks, I never moved. Everything was brought to me, and my children were taken care of. And by my parents and my grandparents, dropped everything. This is the familial support. And, and make be, no mistake, within two years, I lived 90 seconds from my parents. <laughs> and to be fair, a lot of people would be like, well, why didn't her husband... Man, when you got to go to work, yeah, you got to go to work. And if you don't go to work... You're fired. Now you got all kinds of problems. Yeah. You know, he I mean. He was not an entrepreneur. No. I mean, people don't misunderstand or, you know, if you own a business and it's in the earlier stages. Yeah. The the man's not the backup. The right. husband's not the backup. It's true. You know, it's 
that's the way. I mean, because at the end of the day, and people, this drives people nuts. And they go, well, how much did having kids change you? And I'm like, yeah. well, let's see. I still got up at 3 a.m. Yeah. So I could be at the gym by 4.30. Yeah. I still worked till 8 or 9 at night. Exactly. Nothing really changed for me. Yeah. You know, I mean, other than I had higher bills. Right. A more volatile wife. More more chores on the weekend. More chores on the weekend. Nothing really changes for men, you know, when the kids, if they're in a place or they have family nearby or they work for their dad or, you yeah. know, that's a completely different quality of life. Yeah. But for your average working guy, nothing changes. Exactly. You might just, you'll be actually taking on more shifts. Yeah. You know, you got to work Saturdays now so you can cover all the labor you don't know. even get me started and then then she you know despises you because yeah. you're never home but the don't family even. the family being nearby yeah and the and we even know people that lived on the same block as their parents yeah and say the parents moved like 15 minutes away and now they never see them it's it's remarkable how little distance it takes to completely sever the ties. Proximity matters. It does. It is a huge deal. I loved living 90 seconds from my parents because my kids could ride their bicycles. It was one mile. It's it a was huge one de- mile. It is a huge quality of life increase. Within the same neighborhood. Yeah. Even. Just like we talk about, like, the number one way to kill you, to increase your quality of life is to kill you, your commute. Yes. Nearly immediately. Literally, the morning you wake up and walk to your office, which is three seconds down the hall. Your life improves. Yeah. It and we my goal is never to be more than a mile from my brick office. and mortar location. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My office or my gym. Um and literally we've set this up to where we're one mile from our gym that we own and the gym we work out at. Yeah. And, which are two different places. Yeah, and the grocery store. Grocery store. Everything's mean, everything. actually closer. One mile is the farthest out there Truly, is. Truly, everything that we need on a daily basis, or even a weekly basis for the most part, is within walking, riding, bike riding distance. It's actually faster to ride my bike yeah. to work than... Than to drive. Yeah, because I actually, actually drive faster. out of the parking garage. But the goal here is to, to let you know, because these are not discussions that anyone tells guys. No! Which sucks, because... Again, when I started looking, and this is the thing, like, when when my ex-wife was pregnant with the first one, she started talking to her mom about moving closer. Mm-hmm. Her mom's not a grandbaby type woman. Right. She likes working. She likes doing her own thing. Yeah. And she said, well, maybe you should move closer to your brother. <laughs> you know? Man. Who, yeah. I mean. That's rough. Yeah. I mean, so you kind of got to know the situations, are, and she had no interest. And they in, have a decent relationship. It's they not, have a great relationship. Yeah, not, oh, yeah. It's not like they weren't close-ish. But some grandparents, and, and again, one thing that I have seen some studies on is the grandparents, the grandmother, if the grandmother is in like that 45 to 60 range, she'll have a better experience. Oh, yeah, for Once sure. Once they get past a certain age... Even my mom, by the fourth one coming along, she's like, the little ones make me really nervous. Yeah. Because she was elderly. Yeah. And now she had a newborn. Because you, know? you were the baby of your family. Yeah. So she yeah. was already older by the time you were even yeah. having children. Yeah. I mean, you know, if your parents are at that point where, like, dad's got cancer and your mom's been taking care of him for 10 years, she may or may not be on board with a kid. Sure. You know what I mean? So you kind of have to know your situation. But... Again, it's one of those things that you need to explore before you even make a commitment. Yes. A, you know, a marriage commitment. It's true. Because then it's the true. kids are going to come. Especially These are all important factors that are truly going to either make or break your life happiness. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. I mean, I even saw a tweet where the guy goes, hey, I'm just going to tell anyone that is newly married or your wife will want to either move closer to her parents or bring her parents closer to her, and there's no question. You know, he said, "This is my number one marriage advice." That's just to prepare for it. I was that's, like, that's pretty good. solid. Yeah, I wish I had known that. Literally, no one talks about. I mean, well, we do. No, very few people talk yeah. about this. We want you to just get it. Yeah, we, we want, want you. you to win. Perfect. If you like this podcast, please like, subscribe, uh, tell us in the comments down below how this has applied to your life or. Um, yeah, did you move closer to your parents or, you know, yeah. was it a point of contention? We want to, we like to hear people's experiences. We do, we do. 
because we want you to win.